Here we have uh, an example from double integrals. And essentially, this, this problem is all about getting you to reverse the order of integration via a redescription of the region of integration. Now, remember, with double integrals, the region of integration is a two-dimensional set. And it plays a much more significant role in the theory than the integration that you saw at high school, for example. Okay? So, now you can see here that the integrand, the function that we're integrating, is only a function of one variable. Now, what's the problem with just doing what we usually do and integrating the inside integral first with respect to x? and then moving to the outside integral. Well, the problem is that e to the x squared doesn't have a nice antiderivative, right? What's the antiderivative of e to the x squared? Well, it, you can't express it in terms of basic elementary functions. So what we're going to try to do with this problem is to knock over the integral by reversing the order. So instead of the inside uh, differential dx, you have the inside differential dy. It's easy to integrate e to, the y, e to the x squared with respect to y. It'll just be y e to the x squared. So that's the objective. All right, sketch the region of integration. Omega. So you can see that omega is basically bounded by these functions and values. The limits of integration in our in our um, double integral signs. So, let's write this down in terms of Cartesian coordinates. So y, the outside differential, y will be between 0 and 1, and x will be, be between a function of y and another constant function of y. Okay, so what we want to do is take this information and sketch the set that these set of points uh, represent. Okay? Okay, so we want to sketch in the, the lines y equals 0, y equals 1 x equals y and x equals 1. Okay, so there's the line y equals 1. The x-axis is the line y equals 0. The line x equals y is just this one. And the line x equals 1 is just this one. So you can see that essentially we've got two triangular regions there. We need to define, uh, decide which one we're interested in. Now you can see that the x is between two, like at least between one function, right? The y function and this constant function. Okay? So if I was to draw a horizontal line from left to right, that sort of controls the x, the, 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 the vary of, varying of x. You can see that if we choose this lower rectangle, then what, what this says is that this horizontal orange line enters this shaded region at x equals y, yep, and it leaves at x equals 1. So, yes, I've shaded the correct region in. The, the only last thing we need to check is the y um, bounds. So if I move this horizontal line up and down, how far do I need to move it up and down to sweep out the entire triangle? Well, I want to go from 0 up to 1. 0 up to 1. So we actually do have the correct sketch there, where the shaded bottom rectangle is your two-dimensional set omega. Part B. Redescribe omega in the in the form where x is between two constants, 
and y is between two functions here. So it's a little bit different here. Here we've got y between two constants and x between two functions where actually one of the functions is constant. So let's see if we can accommodate that. So I'm, I'm actually going to draw a new curve. You don't necessarily have to do this. And essentially you draw the same curve But you invert, so instead of having x as a function of y here, you write y as a function of x. Now, because it's the simplest function, y equals x, you just actually just swap it around. Okay? Now, instead of a horizontal line, you would use a vertical line. And go, okay, where does this vertical line, this orange vertical line, where does it enter the shaded region. Well, it enters the region at the line y equals 0. And it leaves the region at y equals x. So 0 and x are your y bounds. OK? So, that, so, so here, g of x just would be identically equal to 0. h of x would be x. And if I move the orange line from side to side, I want to move it between x equals 0 and x equals 1. So that then are your two bounds on the x variable. Okay, so that was pretty, uh, pretty easy. Okay, so let's move on to the last part of this question. Hence, write down the equivalent form of the integral involving i with the order of integration reversed, but do not evaluate this integral. So I think what's asked here is just do you know how to re properly reverse the order? You don't, we're not interested in you actually doing the integration. We just want you to set it up. Okay? So for part C... All right, so these are our limits of integration. The constants are on the outside. It's, of course, it's the same integrand. That would be our integral with the order of integration reversed. Okay, now you can see here that the, of course, the... Um, Limits of integration are different, so you can't just switch the integration signs and the differentials willy-nilly. You need to re appropriately, equivalently re-describe the region, then set up the double integral. 